and welcome to the Midweek War! Even when Sword forgets to prompt me. <laughs> I, po- I pointed at the wrong webcam. Do you know how many things have lenses in front of me right now? <laughs> Sorg is like. Did you ever see Matrix Reloaded? That's basically how many monitors Sorg is surrounded by right now. That's amazing. <laughs> you are the one, Neo. Um. So, where, where, I met Mike. He's Sorg. Y'all know this. We're gonna talk about NXT. But first, we breaking news. Sorgelstein. Breaking news, and by breaking, I mean collarbones. <laughs> oh. I mean collarbones and I mean title reigns, Sorg. They are both broken. What? Asuka has relinquished the NXT women's title as she retained the takeover. The fuck? Sorg. You want a response? Yes! This is huge! It is huge. It makes sense. And now she never has to be beaten. But, oh, I mean, it sucks, though. Mm-hmm. It re- now, I have a question. Do you think they're doing this to extend her time in NXT? No. Because I think they are. I think no, they are. No, 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 no. She's going to, she's going to come back around, and uh, she won't come back to NXT. She's going to pop up where she, wherever she's going to pop up See, in, in six to eight weeks. The dog's even upset about Oscar. The dog's pissed. The dog's pissed. Dog was a huge Oscar fan. Mm -hmm. Had the black line under the eye and everything. Yep. (laughs) But, um, see, I think this is extending her stay. Okay. Because I think what they're going to do, six to eight weeks, about the time when the Mae Young Classic is probably going to end. I think think there's going to be some shenanigans. Like, Mae Young Classic probably ends in... What a month, month, month and a half, maybe. And in contrast, Tina's in the chat room on our Facebook Live for Wrestling Mayhem Show saying, "Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so she'll be she'll be on SmackDown uh, uh by Survivor Series. Uh, Brand- and she still could be. She Brandon, still could be. But- Brandon is more concerned that Bobby is crying in his sleep tonight. I think we're all concerned for Bobby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has some pretty. Um, get, he has some gifts that on um, on." on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group that concerned me. Oh, wow. Okay, TSL, CSA in the finale is on September 12th. Oh. Wow, that's really quick. Wait, that's fast. That's real fast. I think there are, I, I think I heard that they're just dropping at, like an entire round at a time. Oh, so we can binge it? I think. Ooh. Okay, so, time to binge watch some ladies wrestling. Maybe I'm going to clear gonna my. Like, I might be clearing my Tuesday. Sork, you know what we should do? Hmm. We should pick a day. We should live stream us watching the Mae Young Classic. Oh, jeez. That way we don't have to do a podcast on it. This is We're true. Reacting to it live. This is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I, we will discuss Cause, logistics of this. Because I, I thought they said that I thought I know they said they were dropping the first four episodes. After that, I thought they were going to um, like kind of space them out a little bit. But right, th- they right. might not be. They very well might not be. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised if the women, the winner of the Mae Young Classic, gets the newly relinquished NXT title. Could be. And, and then and then that person has a feud with Asuka. Could be, or even that person that wins that gets a shot, you know, in like a four way or something. Uh yeah, you could do that. You know. Um, all right. But if it's not the winner of the May Young Classic Sorg, who would you have be the next NXT women's champion? Well, Ember Moon's definitely in contention because she was the last one and she got hurt on her clock. Okay. That probably right. could have worked um, that better. I would say Nikki Cross because Nikki Cross is amazing at everything she well, does. Well, just in general, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying Ember is definitely in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, there's really, like, four, maybe five people that I think are in the running. Yeah, Ember. You got Ember, you got um, Nikki, you got um, Ruby Riot, and you got Peyton and Billy. Mm-hmm. Those are those are my uh, those are my fave five, Sogatron. You know, to, to imitate Booker T for a second. That was a horrible Booker T. All right. Anyway, enough Oscar news. 
Sorg, let's talk about NXT. What was your one word from NXT this week? And we're talking just the episode this week. Just the episode, yes. Just Okay. Country? Question mark? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. All right. We'll get into that. Uh, my one word this week is... Oh, <laughs> and I will explain. I will explain. All right, well, first our goods. Yes, <laughs> the good. Your what was your good this week? Sir? That UK tag match. My God, Mustache yeah. Mountain reuniting on WWE television. We saw them. What was that? A year ago at King of Trios in September last year, and here they are on my WWE television, uh, teamed up again in in Brooklyn. <laughs> It, it was it was pretty great. Uh, that tag match was really really a lot of fun, um, and probably and a I'll, nice I'll, I'll, and, and probably a nice surprise for your live crowd. And Mad Mike was there. Oh, should we point this yeah. out? Mad Mike was there for yeah, this uh, week's uh, NXT proceedings. Yeah, I was just about to explain why my word was that, and you talking about the tag match was a good uh, segue to that. Um, so I went to NXT with a friend of mine and her twelve year old son. This was um, his first wrestling show ever. He just recently became a fan, like maybe a year or so ago. Um, so I was like, I want to take him to his first wrestling show. Like that, that you know, he, he's, he's going to be like me. It's going to be great. And, um, you know, I suggest that we go to TakeOver because, you know, it's fun. You get a lot of good stuff in it. And, you know, it's not as long as, say, a Raw or a regular pay-per-view or something like that. So, cause I know she, my friend is not a fan by any stretch of the imagination, but, um, but I knew her son would enjoy it. So when we start off NXT with no way, Jose, I'm like, okay, all right, we're, we're, we're rocking, we're rolling. And then he gets attacked immediately. And there's no match. I'm like, Oh, and then we get Peyton Royce versus, um, Sarah. Oh, what was her name? Logan. I can't think of Sarah Logan. And while I enjoy both women, that's not the first match you really want to see because it's not really going to light the world on fire. And I was very, very nervous. <laughs> I was very nervous. I'm like, oh, this entire show could suck. <laughs> I was very, very nervous, Sorg, because like the first 25 minutes was not a strong showing for me. <laughs> Not not the strongest showing in the world, but then the British tag match also my good this week, um, just fantastic. Everything it, it kicked it up from there. It was so much fun. Very very exciting. Good. Yes. Uh, also, I gotta say the uh, backstage segment of Bobby Roode and the backstage segment of Oscar, they're the best. And to think Oscar cut that promo with a broken collarbone, that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. All right, uh, but Sorg, not every show is perfect, as we know. What will be your bad for this week's show? I, I am a big fan of the former Crazy Mary Dobson, um, Sarah Logan. Now, and I've been really looking forward to see her, you know, coming up here in NXT and see what they do with her, especially with the May Young Classic and everything. But then she came out the country music. <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fair, Sorg, Crazy Mary Dobson does sound like a country song. Yeah, okay, okay. I mean, I mean, this is like the same the same girl I see on Instagram, like you know, making um, um, barbarian uh, uh, cosplay with with uh, Ray Rowe. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know, and just like, oh yeah, she's gonna be badass, right? And then and then she's she's country Sarah Logan. Hey, you know what? It, but we already have a lot of crazy esque people on NXT. Yeah, yeah, but she could have been the craziest. Ooh, crazier than Nikki Cross. Okay, crazy. Okay, Nikki's doing an art form yeah. of crazy right now. So yeah, like she probably would have come somewhere between Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross, and you don't need that. You need something completely different. Yeah, I guess. I guess. And plus, Sorg, in wrestling, there is such a thing as hardcore country. Damn it. I just have, no, 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 <laughs> no. And once uh, again, love me some Mickey James, but <laughs> not when she's doing a country hey, music hey, video. Sorg, that bitch survived getting pushed in front of a train, all right? 
<laughs> she survived getting hit by a train. She is an hardcore. Actual, an actual Hogwarts Express. She survived that. Because she's hardcore country. <laughs> oh, you're hurting me. You're hurting yeah. me. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, this is Brandon's fault. He brought up Impact and it made me think Hardcore Country and it made me think Mickey James get hit by a train. Um, my bad this week. I want to love Lars Sullivan. I want to love that big burly man. Stop attacking people like No Way Jose. You are not endearing yourself to me, he said. No, you are not. I I want to love that man because Whoa. he is he is. Indie Braun Strowman, like, like I just want to put, like we're like Matt Carlin talks about five pounds, of, five slabs of ham. That's Laura Sullivan in one person. He's all he's the entire four way match from the main event of SummerSlam. In he is one the person. ham hawk. He is the ham hawk. Yeah, he's he's wow. the, he's the he's the side of beef that Sylvester Stallone punches in Rocky. That's what he is. But yeah, um, that that was my bad. I, because they didn't like. And I'm like, okay, because so I was watching it live. And I'm like, maybe they have a segment where this makes sense, and they didn't do that. So I mean, I I guess they're desperately trying to get us to boo Lars Sullivan, but I think most of us were only booing that we weren't getting a match. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it worked because the NXT the full sale crowd's still gonna love him. Oh, absolutely. All right, but uh, Sorg, what would you change about NXT this week? Uh, yeah, I'd have a match. Like, I kind of feel bad that that that, that Sullivan came out. Well, wait, no, 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 no. Let me walk that back. I changed Sarah Logan's entrance music. <laughs> to hardcore no! country! Well, you know, like, let's go all the way if we're going to, right? <laughs> That'd be amazing if she came out to music provided by Mickey James. Has one wrestler ever done the theme song for another wrestler? I don't know if that's if that's a thing that's happened before, but I'm huh. very curious to see if we can find that. Has out. wait wait I'm trying to think. There's the honky tonk man stuff. Has Jimmy Hart? I mean, there's the sensational Sherry singing on Shawn Michaels' original music. That's okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I but mean, she I was think also it managing him. She was. But she was I, managing him at the time. I'm though. trying to think if Jimmy Hart was in any of the songs. I know he's he's written. I, well, he, a lot he of produced them. a lot. Of, he yeah. produced he a lot written, of them. He, yeah, but his voice being on it, I'm not sure. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. Jeff Jarrett and Road Dog. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All that's, right. That's, All right. Uh, yeah. 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 Spend my day working hard for the dough. <laughs> Oh, this is happening. <laughs> this is definitely happening. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. Um, My change this week. Why NXT? <laughs> why didn't we get Oni Lorcan versus Danny Birch? Why? Wait, you could yeah. have had Lars att- Yeah, why? You could have had Lars attack No Way Jose on, on NXT proper. You had. Y- you had it. You had it, guys. Like, you perfectly set up a rubber match, and I wanted to see it. I wanted to see those two bald bastards beat each other's brains out and then bro hug and form a tag team. But we're not getting that, and I just used a lot of bees in a row. Yes, you did. <laughs> I did. Not the bees. Not the bees. Never the bees. Um, But uh, why? That's That's my change. Like... We could have taken out the entire No Way Jose segment and done an actual fun, hot match to open up the show. In fe- instead, the show kind of opened up pretty lukewarm. Yeah, it was definitely the weakest of the thing we filmed before a takeover kind of situations to me. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, last year we opened up with Enzo and Cass. It's like all the worries we had about takeover going into it just laid on the pre-show. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why I was super concerned about the entire show. Like, a half hour in, before we got to the tag match, I'm like, when oh, okay, this tag match should be good. And then everything just improved from there. But, mm-hmm. oh, it was, it, was very, it was very worrying. 
So generally, you're uh, you know we we talked about Takeover kind of in general on on Wrestling Mayhem show and it versus mm-hmm. SummerSlam and that kind of context. And I know you were part of it in the chat room, and I know we brought some of your comments in there. I just want um you know beyond that, can you kind of give your general impressions of Takeover from a live perspective? Uh, Takeover. There are a lot of uh, New Japan shirts, chants lot of that stuff i mean not not so much all of new japan more kenny omega and the young bucks mm-hmm. but that's to be expected when your merch gets picked up at hot topic that is true too <laughs> that is true too also yeah, if, if i can buy kenny omega shirts in poughkeepsie you know you're doing something right also it was shared to me by our, our boy our boy mutilator larry uh today that he was on the wwe app and there was an ad for new japan uh new japan world what yeah I got a screen cap of it. Whoa, that's... I'll send that over to you. That's really weird. Yeah. I don't know why they would advertise just, that. Just an ad network. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, you know I guess so. I, yeah, mean, I, don't I, think, guess so. I don't think WWE has a say in those. They ju- they're just like, yeah, run ads on here and whatever filters through, right? That, wow. Whoever, whoever set that up through New Japan is fucking smart. <laughs> they are intelligent people. Um... But I will say one cool moment that I don't that the cameras didn't show because I watched Takeover back afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a point where Asuka basically puts on the disarmor on Ember Moon. Okay, and uh, that was the match where Becky, Bailey, and Sasha were at ringside. Becky actually stood up and did the just bring it to Asuka, like and Asuka was looking right at her. <laughs> it was kind of great. It was really really good. I'm like. Oh, let's let ha- let's have that be a thing. <laughs> like I would love to see Becky versus Oscar. That that's that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Especially since Becky is uh, uh, Twitter uh, uh, mixing it up with MMA people these days. Mm-hmm. So let, let's like like why can't we just can Becky just be a badass? Yeah, it's because it's because SmackDown doesn't have badasses. Mm-mm. At mm-hmm. least on the women's side. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah. Um, but I, I want Sork. Did you watch the Takeover pre-show? I, what? No, no, because I watched it the next day, so I didn't. Okay, you need to watch the Takeover pre-show. Oh, because honestly, some of it was hot garbage, but Biggie was on there talking about his time in NXT, and was fucking amazing. <laughs> Biggie is fantastic, and then Neville came on, and oh. Neville was in character the whole time Mm -hmm. and he was sitting right next to Corey graves his former tag team partner (laughs) who betrayed him oh my god it was fantastic it was really good like neville just turned to him he's like yeah um i i because they were talking about johnny gargano yeah and uh and um neville was like so you're asking me if i think gargano can come back after his tag team partner turned on him and have a stellar career. What do you think I think about that, Corey? And Corey's like, uh, so full disclosure. <laughs> it was really, really good. It was really, really fun. That's amazing. Yeah, the pre-show was because, yeah, and Brandon said they had no NXT stars on the pre-show. They had NXT stars of the past. Right. That's that, what that, they had that on was... there. And it was, that was the homecoming part of it, right? Yeah, that was the whole selling point, and it was it was really good. It was really really good. Okay, I'll have to take um, a look back. Yeah, it was definitely worth your time. Uh, but Sorg, where do you rank NXT for this week? Number two, number two, mostly. Um, I mean, the women's match was okay. Uh, uh, you know, it was it was decent enough to make up for a non-match to begin with. Although Sullivan beating people up, it just kind of is is just you know flat okay to great. Um, a lot of recaps, so that hurts it, but really made up by giving us the gift of that UK uh, match. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, NXT is going to be number three for me this week. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, um, th- this show is always hurting. It's always hurting for content because they ha- they basically have to fill it half with recaps. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's more it's more by default. If <laughs> this if this show had Oni Lorcan versus Danny Birch we'd be having an entirely different conversation. I can't remember if we did our change for this week, but my change would be, oh. do we really need to include so much of the entrances to the main event in the recap? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, the main event 
did have the special entrances, let's so be, I kind of get that. That's kind of what we tune in for to see what they're going to do with Glorious this time. Although they're, they're, and maybe this is just me. They peaked with the Glorious entrance with what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. They peaked when they had him in Toronto with the choir. Mm -hmm. That was the peak, and it's been downhill since there. Like I, I, I think they were just like, mm, I can't really come up with anything else. Yeah. Oh, and uh, funny bit about um, Rude's entrance. I was looking to see if they showed it um, on camera, but after the piano part and the uh, Lazy Susan, when he's walking out, the entire LEDs on the stage shot, like, were down. And you saw, like, Jumbo 65 on one, Jumbo 52 on another. Like, like you saw the codes for the lighting cues. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, you, you would have loved it as a tech guy, Sorg. It was fantastic. Oh, no. I was just we, looking, I'm like, ah, that's not what's supposed to be on there. We need, we need to run that by some of our friends that have worked on this. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was it was pretty great. Um, but yeah, and, and TakeOver was, we said it before, it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It was such a damn good. Oh, and one, one other thing that I thought was really, really clever, what NXT did, uh, when Red Dragon and Adam Cole showed up in the main event, I like that they had them approach from opposite sides because it confused the crowd. Yes. Because the crowd, like, as soon as it looked like, as soon as Drew was celebrating, everybody and their mother was looking for Adam Cole. Mm -hmm. Everyone and their mother. And then Red Dragon came out, and it distracted everyone for long enough where, like, you could see the heads pivot in the crowd. Like, you can see, like, oh, 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 something's happening over there. Oh, it's Red Dragon. Okay, that's weird. And then Adam Cole, baby. Just sneaks up from behind. It was really great. Amazing. Yes. Oh, and uh, I do want to give a shout out before we uh, before we sign off to Johnny Gargano. Friend of the show, Johnny Gargano. He gave my little buddy his first markout moment. Oh, that's awesome. It, it was because like the UK match, he was he was into it, but nothing really piqued him. When Gargano plunged it through the ropes, he was like, "Oh my god!" And I'm like. Got him. Got him. Absolutely got him. But yeah, it was it was fantastic. There's um I, I just want to hit some a couple of comments in the chat room here before we go. Tina's yeah. saying he was running to a sort of modern day nature boy. He, he, he definitely does that on the big shows. Uh they had no no, we said that. Here's a dream match from Brandon, Adam Cole versus John Cena. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Um, um it, uh, if see. I had a dream, if I had a dream match for Adam Cole, it'd be AJ Styles. Tina says, uh, "I'm presuming talking about Sarah Logan. Yeah, far cry from her former trainer in Madman Pondo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just a scotch. Oh, uh, Sork, before we sign off, what are you naming the trio of Adam Cole and the Young Bucks? Um, I really like somebody brought up Honor Society. Okay, the other night. Okay, uh, I, I think the Honor Squad." Honor Squad, yeah. Like I, I think, don't think it, it's a squad. No, there's got to be something like that. No, I don't know. Because I, mean, can... I could see them doing Honor Club or something too. Just to mess. No, with no we have too many clubs. Mm. We have too many clubs. You we can... have the club. We have Balor Club. And you can have... join the Pizza Club for the ten dollar level at patreoncom slash Mayhem Show, like our good friend Billy. Wow. That was a layup, Sorg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Walk Sorg. Right into that one. Besides Patreon, where can the good people on the internet find you, Sorg? Sorgtronmedia.com. So many great, 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 great shows coming up here uh, that we're working with. So go check it out. All right. And you can find me at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. And also go to at Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM for when I live tweet things such as Lucha Underground and occasionally drop some thoughts on NXT. And uh, for Sorgatron, I'm Mad Mike, and we will catch you next time on The Mid Week War!